Hi, this is just a small uh, piece from me. Um, I wrote on my blog today about the tragic events that happened in America. And of course, it's important to stress that, you know, someone was killed uh, and actually some people were critically Ill injured and Secret Service agents put their lives in the way to protect Donald Trump, who was shot at. Um, and really, you could argue it was a miracle that he wasn't killed. And I do think, first of all, I know there are some Christians who who love Donald Trump and think that he's a, a martyr and a, some sort of messiah figure. And I'm seeing some sort of language about this, sort of hailing how God has ordained him and saved him and he's this ultimate unstoppable figure who even a bullet couldn't harm. I think that language is really dangerous uh, and it concerns me that that could further stoke violence back at Democrats as though Democrats are all the evil which Trump says that people should stand up against. But there's also been bad language on the other side with Biden just days before Trump being shot at being describing Trump as needing to be put into the target, that a bullseye needs to be on Trump. Now, of course, I don't believe for a moment that Biden was actually advocating for Trump's murder. After all, if this was a political assassination, don't you think it would have been more successful? Now, what we're seeing here is really unfortunate language that causes, indirectly, if you like, a response in a lone shooter to act out what they think other people on apparently their side would approve of. And this is really, really harmful. As Christians, we must not be wishing for harm for our political opponents. There will be some Christians today who might even secretly be wishing that Donald Trump had been killed. After all, if he is a Hitler, as some people describe him, why is it a surprise that some would want to try and stop him. But we as Christians shouldn't wish harm to Trump and we shouldn't wish harm to Biden either. And I would urge you, American readers and listeners particularly, to stand up for peace, to advocate for a return to quieter, calmer words in your political sphere. We've seen over here with the death of Joe Cox, one of our MPs a few years ago, that rhetoric can directly inspire lone, violent individuals to take matters into their own hands. And so, please don't think of this as another opportunity to score a political point. But instead, why not dial the temperature down a little bit? I would love for Donald Trump and Joe Biden to stand together before the American nation and urge for calm, urge for peace, and make a, um, a determination a covenant, a commitment, if you like, that they will abide by the results of this election and there will be a peaceful transfer of power or a peaceful continuation of power, no matter what. Because I fear for you. And we are so grateful over here that recently in our election, there was a peaceful transfer of power. And I hope and pray that the same will happen for you, whichever the result of this election is. And that in the meantime, peace will happen. And I urge you as Christians, pray for peace. Pray for the peace of your nation. Pray for those that you see as your political enemies, that they may have peace and that you may have peace. And I hope and pray that this event will not lead to further inflammation of the um, divide that there is in your nation, but instead true unity. And I know that both Trump and Biden have stated that they want to see uh, political violence condemned in some way. But I want to see more from them. I want to see more from Christians. And I want to see more from both sides of the parties to advocate for peace, not war.